One reason I created a fictional world at all is so that people can visit in their minds or think about who they would be. There's a part in the book that's all about writing your own story before you're quite brave enough to live it out. Eliza Lane. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Hole. And I'm Lee Esses. Today's episode is titled To Make Your World Explorable. These are the types of things that allow for other stories to be told, not just the particular one that you are telling in this time. If you anchor everything in the world too close to your main character and all of the trials and interesting parts about the world are all tied into your main character, it can feel a little Mary Sue and very uninteresting to try to create more with. So... Which fictional universe would you explore? The John Wick one. Can I say that? (laughs) Absolutely. I really think the whole concept of the hotels continental and the secret currency and that kind of thing that they have in the John Wick stories are a lot of fun. And the whole power dynamic of one person holding ultimate power over another person has always been central to my writing style because it's something that I really enjoy exploring. I'm sure it comes as no surprise I would explore the Cosmere. Really? Yeah, I know. It's shocking. (laughs) And the reason I say Cosmere is because I can't narrow it down to a single Brandon Sanderson world. I want to explore Roshar and Cell and Scadrial and all of the places. Something that we understand instinctively, but not necessarily cerebrally, is we start to enjoy worlds. We start to want to explore worlds, often during our second consumption of the story. The first one, we're very enamored with the trials and tribulations of the characters, but for your readers that are going to be reading your book for a second and third time, a lot of what they're going to get out of your story comes through the lens of the world itself. So as you are world building, consider that second time around and give your readers something interesting to discover as they re-explore your world, as they look at it and consider it. And there are a few reasons that we'll talk about today about how and why to do that. And I think the number one reason why it is so important to have your world be explorable is because then it is fan fictionable and there is nothing that helps a book or a world or a franchise to grow more than being fan fictionable. I'm convinced this is why a lot of YA type stories sort young adults into four different groups. You've got Harry Potter, you've got Divergent, you've got all of these worlds that sort your characters based on their particular talents. So I can go up to basically anyone in my age group and go, which Hogwarts house are you? And they'll be like, oh, I'm a Hufflepuff. Oh, I'm definitely a Slytherin. Whatever their house is, they know. This allows your readers to connect with and feel invested in your story. The other part of having a story that is fan fictionable is having tertiary characters that can have their own storylines. So the concierge, I would love to see a story written for the concierge and his interactions of working the front desk at the Continental and the John Wick world. What else is the concierge seeing as this underground world of assassins is working around him? Another part of making your world fan fictionable is to make sure that the setting is unique and interesting, but also separate from the story itself. So we just finished listening to Project Hail Mary. And there's a part of it where we meet a character and we learn a little bit about their culture and these interesting facets of who they are. The fan fictionable element is what else is happening on this character's homeworld? What else is this world like? So giving your readers that feeling that there is something else beyond allows them to then create their own stories in this world because they can see it's much larger than just the plot. Another thing that makes it very easy to be fan fictionable is to have a society as part of a setting as well as the main character. So we see and follow Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan throughout Phantom Menace. We know there are other Jedi out there, other people doing their thing, 
other bounty hunters. All of this makes it very fan fictionable because the world is massive and there are other people with this super cool skill set. Aside from having a fan fictionable world, you also want to, in order to make it explorable, make sure that the world is more interesting than the conflict. And we mentioned this with saying make sure the setting is separate from the plot, but we want to expand on this just a little bit. If you think about it, Supernatural would not have run nearly as long as it did if the demon that they hunted in season one was the only one out there. You knew that what happened through season one, there is a whole vast world of monsters and demons and things for them to fight against. So it can be expanded whether or not they did go beyond that season or whether or not you go beyond that single book doesn't matter a lot if you make sure that the world has potential beyond that initial conflict. And I would include monsters in this, especially whatever makes your world building unique, whether it's a magic system, whether it's a particular kind of monster, whether it's this dystopian thing, tying this uniqueness to certain locations in the world makes it a lot more interesting. I think the James Cameron Avatar movies did this really well where each of the different places that they explored in Pandora was unique and interesting. And that was a lot of what made the world feel very explorable. Because if I go this way, I'll go see the god tree. And if I go this way, I might run into some flying insect creature pterodactyls. If I go this way, we're going to run into the human base and that's dangerous. The world building is tied to specific kinds of terrain. And what makes the world unique is tied to specific areas on the map. Speaking of map, actually build a map. It is very helpful and everybody loves a good map in their story. But if you are going to take this on, if you are going to work on having that world in a visible sense, we have a few recommendations. First and foremost, that is to leave blank sections. Only show a part of the world that is important to your story, but make sure that it looks like it goes beyond. Or if you show the entire map, just have your story take place in a small portion of it. I think this is really well represented in The Lord of the Rings. The walk from the Shire to the Mordor is a tiny, tiny portion of the whole map of Middle Earth. You can mention those other places and those other cultures in small ways. So in one of the stories that I'm working on, I mention that this person has golden hair, so likely his heritage or maybe where he came from is this other kingdom over here. But then I just leave it there. Okay, this other kingdom exists and over there they're a lot paler, but it's not relevant to the rest of the story, so let's move along. Another thing to consider as you build your map is to know the landmarks and what lore surrounds them. We don't need to know the whole backstory of the Whomping Willow. It's just cool world building until it becomes relevant to the character. And I implore you, if you're creating a map of your own and you want it to feel explorable, do not forget the third dimension. Do not forget up and down. We spend a lot of time thinking about north, south, east, west, when really the coolest parts of especially any fantasy or sci-fi map are the floating islands or the deep underground tunnels that lead to this enormous dwarven forge or whatever. The mines of Moria that lead to the Balrog. These epic things. And speaking of the mines, keep those kinds of historical places in mind. Are there any abandoned places in your world or sites of massive battles Those elements can help your world feel like there are more stories to be told either from the past or in the future, depending on how your whole story goes. Having these epic scenes, giant, beautiful throne rooms or massive battles or crumbling ruins show that there is history to the world. It didn't just come into being as soon as your story began. Now, we have gotten some requests as far as how to build a map, how to actually write down instead of just doing like a circle here and a blob there. How do I draw out a map that looks realistic for my story? 
One trick we see a lot is to use orange peels. So you peel an orange and then scatter the pieces of it, and that can create some nice continents and islands for you. I would recommend doing this in a variety of big chunks and smaller chunks that fall off. If all you can do is peel an orange and make tiny little chunks, unless you're building a world of islands, it's not quite as useful. Another one I see, especially online a lot, is to lay out a big thing of butcher paper and then dump a bunch of rice on it. Or beans or dice or some other kind of small pieces of something. This allows for the edges of your continents to feel especially natural without being like a straight line or a straight curve. It's got this jagged edge to it that makes it feel like you put thought into it. And there are interesting things happening on this coast. It's realistic. You can also use something like coffee splatter, tea splatter, something that will create an irregular pattern on paper to give you something to outline. There are lots of different tricks to this, lots of different ways to create a map. There are also a lot of different online resources, which we will link to in our resources page for our website. No matter how you decide to build your map, Err on the side of awesome as you build your world. The more fun your world is, the more unique it is, the more excited the readers will be to explore it. And that's not just magic uniqueness. It is the world itself. So having these types of cool elements just because they're cool is great for your world building. Do not shy away because it doesn't feel realistic. Lean into it and always write selfishly. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing.